Hi, it's Michelle from McTish. Today I'm going to talk about one of the banes of corporate world, which is the planning to migrate a network file share. More often than not, with all of us, or many of us, working from home a little bit more often now, um, there's a requirement to move the content off a network file share and into a more collaborative space like SharePoint Online. And this normally creates a little bit of angst amongst some of the business users as we're all really, really used to working in that network file share environment. We're used to having things grouped in folders the way we like. So what I'm going to do today is just show you an example of uh, moving content from an HR or human resources network file share into SharePoint Online. So what I've got here is I've got a groups of folders. Um, administration, I've got meetings, uh, you know, another uh, two personnel and policy. I'm going to go into the meetings one just to show you how the information is grouped. So I've got a meetings folder, I then I've got a folder by month, then I've got another folder by the type of content, and then I'm able to access my document. But I'm already about four levels down from HR in order to access the content that I'm looking for. So having things embedded in folders generally was the way that we were able to group things together. It's a meeting, it's based in August and what the information is that was attached to the meeting, whether it's agenda or minutes. And this is the way we have more often than not have worked in a network file share. But there is an easier way to work in SharePoint if you move that content across. Now, a lot of the time when you talk about network file share migrations, often um, the end user is expecting you to lift exactly what is here in your network file share and dump it exactly the same way into SharePoint with the same look and feel. Everything's still inside folders. But SharePoint Online gives you that next level of being able to group information. It gives you the ability to collaborate, access the information from anywhere, whether you're at home, whether you're in the office, or if you're on a mobile device as well. You can put content into SharePoint and group it and attach metadata to it a lot um, easier as well. Now I've created a SharePoint site and this was um, a previous little snippet of, of um, webinar that I did, which was how to create um, a site using the built-in Microsoft templates that um, apply now. This is the onboarding template for a communication site. All I did was I pulled that template in and I've uh, got it displaying the way I want. The look and feel is highly configurable. It's really easy to use. But the best thing here is I now have my libraries running down the right hand side here, which used to be folders. I have meetings, I have the administration, I have personnel files as well, and I have policies and procedures over here. Now you can actually make SharePoint work whichever way you like. I've got policies and procedures in an image to make it a little bit more visual, to be able to grab people's, inf um, uh, draw people's eyes to it a lot quicker if I wanted to, but you can still have those things as links down the right hand side. For the purposes of this little snippet here, I'm just going to show you the library I created for meetings. Remember meetings was a folder. Now if I go into meetings, I have all of my content to do with meetings, but I have also got some metadata that I can attach to it. This was a folder, which was the month, and that was a folder, which was the type of information that I might have been looking for, agenda or minutes. But now I'm able to apply it to this lovely flat structure, and it will enable me to create views. It will um, enable me to group the content a certain way so that it is easy to find, easy to manage and searchable because you've got this cool metadata attached to it as well. One of the things you'll notice is that one of my items right at the bottom of this library doesn't have metadata on it. And this is all about when you start creating this level of structure in SharePoint. If you're moving content from a network file share and you're moving it into a library structure and you're giving it that metadata, you don't have to force the metadata upon people. You give people the what's in it for me moment. The, the fact that they know that if they attach a piece of metadata to the content, they can use it to group information. They can use it to save information a specific way and create a view. It's searchable, um, refinable inside the library because these are all filterable columns. But the best thing is you can create a view and work with your content in a nice flat structure, easy to find, easy to see and easy to access from any device. In the next two weeks or so, I'll be doing another webinar, which will be going through some of the other ways you can configure metadata when you're moving content from a network file share that will help encourage users and um, get them on board to moving their content into SharePoint Online. Until then, take care, happy planning, and uh, hope to see you then.